Hi, my name is Beth Scheid, and I run the Global Manufacturing IT Organization at Procter & Gamble. And my name is Tim Rogers, and I'm the Chief Architect for the Manufacturing Space, and both Beth and I support Procter & Gamble Supply Chain. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take you through a little bit of our digitization journey and how we are making a step change in that journey. Now it's important to put a shameless plug in about Procter & Gamble. These are some of the brands that we are making in our plants on a daily basis, and we're doing everything humanly possible to make sure these products are on the shelf, especially during COVID. So our superiority journey, uh, make, we take a look at different elements of our product life cycle, and we make sure that we deliver each one of these aspects with excellence. In the manufacturing space, there's a couple of these areas that we're gonna hone in on. One is making sure on the far left-hand side, we have a new standard of excellence, which means we have to make sure every line is operating every day and delivering quality product. Irresistible products is the next area where obviously in a manufacturing plant, that is what we're responsible for. And we also make sure our packaging is exactly what is supposed to be on there. On the far right-hand side, we're delivering superiority in the consumer and customer value equation, which means how do we make sure we keep our manufacturing costs as low as we can so we can deliver the highest quality, lowest price? So what are we going to cover today? What we would like to do is share with you a little bit about how we're using plan apps and how that's helping. And then what we would like to do then is say, well, we've got a large um, install base of Prophecy and people have asked us, well, how do you, how do you handle all your deployments at this enterprise level? So we thought we would just share with you our approach in case you wanted to reapply that. And then we're, we're working on two new areas with, with GE Digital. One of those is manufacturing data cloud, and the second one is what we'll call Prophecy Lite or Prophecy in the Cloud. Now, we are talking superheroes, so what we thought we would do is we would introduce you to our villain, who we call Mr. Sneaky Losses, and our hero, which of course is our own personal Mr. Clean. Now Procter & Gamble has, I mentioned, in our plants and in Prophecy, we have a very big install base. So just a few statistics to share with you about you know, what, what it is is the scope of our work. So we have two manufacturing execution systems. One is from GE Digital Prophecy. And we have a very big install base. We have 94 sites that have Prophecy installed. And we also have a homegrown solution, which we are in the process of transitioning to Prophecy. Now, if you do the math, there's a little bit of a challenge here. And Mr. Sneaky Losses would love this. And the fact that in some plants, we have both Maple and Prophecy. So <laughs> that does cause some, some, some challenges. We have 10 categories, 39 different manufacturing solutions, lots of plants, 2,000 plus lines and pieces of equipment. And most importantly, we have, our, we have about 45,000 operators who are our strategic audience for the solutions that we're providing. And Beth, who might you say our heroes are? Oh, that's a good question, Tim. So what I would say, I'd categorize in P&G, we've got some really wonderful heroes. And if I say four different categories, I would say one of them is um, the people who are creating our digital strategy. A second one is the group that's actually delivering that, deli that, that strategy, creating the solutions and bringing those to life. And then here on the screen, we have 45,000 people who are the users of those solutions, making sure that they use the digital capability to then uh, create quality product. And ultimately, we have our support, our support team who make sure our lines stay operational um, day in, day out. So Tim, over to you. All right, so let's take a moment and talk about how we're taking advantage of the Prophecy Plan applications and the other software in that suite. So generally what we like to do is we start with basic functionality that we would anticipate every one of our facilities to take advantage of. And what we're really looking for is how do we gather data so that we can take care of those things like stops and the downtime and just the notifications that people might be getting all the time that the equipment is either 
functioning properly or not, we're making product or we're not. So we're gathering all sorts of information about that along with what is the material scrap rates or the quality of the material. These type of things are, are at the end of the day, there's what makes sneaky losses very happy, right? Because that's just not good for the company because it means we're not producing product. Um, the good news is, is we do have those 45,000 people and they're very talented. Um, they know what to do. They uh, can drive the losses out of the system and they can take advantage and, up and make better product at the end of the day. If we talk about some more advanced features, I think the first thing we need to say is these are more so for plants that have progressed on their maturity model. They're ready for the next step. And we start generally with a work system that we refer to as IWS, Integrated Work Systems, which is a process where we enable the plants um, and everyone in the plant to be involved with how do we drive the, the functionality, how do we drive the work, how do we make product and so on with that. We actually license that product throughout the world and um, and we take full advantage of that. We're very proud of this system. If uh, anyone, and there are people that might be listening to this call that take advantage of that licensing. So I think if folks are interested in that, they might reach out to us afterwards. Um, recognize those systems, the, the work systems and the applications, they're ultimately there to drive the users, the people that are making the product. We wanna make sure that they are enabled and they can do things with fewer touches as much automation as possible and, and really in a, the most efficient way possible because everyone's quite busy and we need them to be doing the more value added activities. Um, with that, the work process and the applications, we can actually change our process. So we can provide integrations where necessary. We can potentially streamline the work and ultimately cutting out those manual touches that, um, people just don't like. And at the end of the day, we're really looking for a vision of touchless. We want everything to be as automated as possible because our, our people that work in the, in the facilities, they're very busy. Um, they don't have time to do things that they would view as, as extra work or you know typing data in from one system to another or, or, and things like that because we really need them focusing on making product and moving the materials so that it can end up on the shelf for you to purchase. And bam, that's what makes Mr. Clean happy. Why don't we shift gears a little bit because now we've talked about what are we doing with the plan apps. Why don't we talk a little bit about how do we get all these solutions to the sites? So the first thing Mr. Sneaky Losses loves is the fact that we have plants in many countries around the world. And not every plant is the same for a variety of reasons. The materials that are available to that plant, um, the, the cost of technology in different plants, et cetera. So we've got different plants with different line configurations all over the place. And that just opens the door for Mr. Sneaky Losses to come in and add overhead cost. So how are we overcoming that? So what, the first thing that we do, and we're just going to give you a couple steps on what we do for digitization, is we have a SharePoint site. And you may say, oh, not another SharePoint site. But this really is used a ton by our team. It has all the data that all those 45,000 folks need to understand what are our solutions, get some training videos for what those solutions are, um, get testimonials, understand the benefits. Um, be able to see in one spot where are all the releases coming, the new functionality, when's new functionality coming or going to be available. They can even put a request into the site to say, hey, I like that solution in my site. Because not every solution is meant for every site. Um, and then lastly, we provide full transparency and pricing. Um, so both one time and ongoing cost. So the SharePoint site is really critical for us. The second thing we do is we have a development and operations team. We follow the idle process. Um, so we, we do everything in the idle process to make sure that we have a continuous loop of improvements coming because each line could be different. What we do is we start with a standard template for 
when somebody has a new request, we start with a really basic standard template that allows them to um, take advantage of standardization where standardization is needed, yet have uniqueness where there's equipment or quality or production um, differences that are really required by the lines. Our template looks something like this. It just is very simple. It's Excel. You've all seen Excel. And it just has some basic questions that, that guide people through that standard template. The next thing that we do is we have development teams. So we have one team is responsible for making sure the platform that Prophecy is riding on is evergreen. Um, that includes the latest version of Windows, SQL, Prophecy, not just Prophecy plan apps, but Prophecy historian, iFix, uh, workflow, SOA, IGS, whatever else we're using. So there's, um, we have one team that's focusing on the platform, and then we have a second team that's going in, working line by line, using that Excel template I showed you to uh, deliver solutions to the sites. And then the next area is adoption tracker. We're very, we've created and introduced this past year a way of being able to say, for every site, every line, every, we know exactly what application is installed on what line. Um, and that's been a huge help for us. And then lastly, we have our support organization in place, which is highly talented, and we're very proud of our support team because they do a great job. And Beth, with the adoption tracker, how was it uh, perceived or received by our sites? Um, they really like it because they now can see themselves, you know, are they using all these solutions that they spent all this time qualifying, testing, and putting in production? Are they using it like they were expecting to use it? So I think... It's been very good for our central team to know where we have opportunity to provide more training, but also for the local sites. And frankly, you know, the, Mr. Clean, yeah, that was a good leading thing, but Mr. Clean really enjoys uh, the, these, this deployment approach and how we're making the, trying to keep all 2,000 implementations um, up to date. Span. Spick and span. <laughs> So let's move on to something new. So the innovation that we're partnering with GE on. Um, recently, we worked with them on a new concept that is now known as the Manufacturing Data Cloud, and that is taking these systems to the next level. So when we started, we we're trying to figure out how do we deal with the fact we have 100 plus plants and they're different from uh, age or where they are on a maturity matrix, but it, but really what happened is, is these applications grew up inside of the plants. So they tend to be quite big. Um, they're all local. People want the data. So we started looking at what would we do different? So first of all, we said, great, people want the data. We have a lot of infrastructure at the facilities. Let's get it out of the facilities. It's not needed there for an extended period of time. And it ultimately is driving an increased cost in the amount of infrastructure that we have to maintain and support. Um, at the same time, people are very hungry for that information. So making it available easier um, in a central location, there's a lot of value in that. What kind of value are you seeing? <laughs> so first of all, when we did the, the reduction in our infrastructure or the amount of data that we store on site, we had as much as an 80% reduction in the size of the footprint for the infrastructure and a significant performance boost because there's less data for the application to wade through. On the same time, we have so many people accessing this information and they're starting to do more advanced analytics or prognostics or predictions of what might be happening in our plants or what could we do different now that this information can be used centrally, cross-plant, uh, correlated with other information that we have in the company and do some machine learning or some advanced analytics as well. One thing I would say here is we're on the beginning of this journey, and this has been a really great co-innovation with GE. We've been partnering amazingly well, and out of the 94 sites, we already have this in 77 of our sites. So it's been uh, 77 or 78, where well, you've got a lot out there. So we're pretty we're pretty proud of this. It's gone very More quick every day. In, in the last year. And then really, this we expect this to be a big win. So just bam. <laughs> How about if we talk a little bit about Prophecy Light? All right, let's talk Prophecy Light. So similar to what we do with these applications in our normal or core facilities, our core production facilities, 
we also have an awful lot of facilities that may not have a ton of equipment or suppliers that may not necessarily have used this type of functionality in the past. But really, when we look at it, everybody could benefit from this type of functionality because our distribution centers, they do have equipment, our suppliers have equipment, some of our other facilities have equipment, and they really have stops, they have downtime, unplanned losses, they have um, waste. You know, we don't like waste because that means it's product that doesn't end up on the store shelf. They have people. So really, this is what makes Mr. Sneaky Losses quite happy because historically we've not had this functionality at these facilities, mainly because they're not large enough to, to support this type of investment or the, equi the equipment footprint is fairly small. So people tend to kind of, you know, ignore it or skip it a little bit, but they do have the exact same problems. So as we've implemented what we're calling Prophecy Light, we're doing it in a way that is more cost effective for some of these facilities that at this point doesn't need that type of advanced functionality. Um, and I would say we've had some pretty early wins absolutely. of bringing this into our manufacturing site. So we're very really excited about it. This has been a big bam. Big bam. Yeah. And you sure. know, I think um, as we continue to progress, these sites may actually start to be able to take advantage of some of the more advanced features. But we'll have to look at does it make sense to do given given where they are and the fact that we're not installing the application on premise. So it, you know, are we willing to take some of those risks? But right now it's working quite well. So what we just shared with you over the last 20 minutes is how is prophecy plan apps being used today? How are we deploying this to our plants and keeping the sites um, up to date with the, everything that we have available? And some new innovation that we've been jointly working with GE on, both in Manufacturing Data Cloud as well as in Prophecy Light. So that is how we've made a digital step change at Procter & Gamble.